Well guys, look at Uber Booba stock. Oh my goodness guys, Uber stock's down about 5% after hours and it's approaching a new all time low Uber stock is, okay? I mean, down about $1.54 here. Uh, it's in the $29 range. And after hours trading's getting ready to close up here in just a bit. So we'll see exactly where that closes out at. But needless to say, in this video, let's talk a bit about Uber stock, Uber stock price, why the stock is moving down, if it will continue to move down, and what I'm personally planning on doing as far as Uber stock goes. Am I gonna sell my Uber shares? Am I just holding my current Uber shares? As you guys know, I have a position in Uber. Or am I gonna start buying super heavy into Uber stock? Now, what exactly am I planning on doing, okay? Now, I released a video a couple hours ago on Financial Education 2 that takes a super deep dive into those Uber earnings and all the fundamentals that are going on in Uber's business model as far as the underlying business goes. So if you wanna check out a super in-depth video. That video is like 20 plus minutes. Check out that video on financial education too. That doesn't talk about the stock price or the things we're going to talk about in this video. That goes into just everything Uber said and did basically in their last quarter, okay? Now, as far as the stock price goes, this video is going to focus on the stock price and what I'm going to do in relation to the stock price, okay? But you would think the stock would go up, right? I mean, this is a double beat. This is a double beat as, as far as the numbers they reported. They lost 68 cents. Analysts were expecting for an 81 cent loss there, okay? So that's much better than expected, much smaller loss than expected. They did revenue of 3.81 billion versus 3.69 was expected. So that's about $120 million more in revenue Uber did in this quarter versus what analysts were expecting. So if you just look at those two things, you would kind of assume like the stock's gonna be up, like it's a double beat. They beat on EPS, they beat on revenues, you know, $120 million more in revenue than what analysts were expecting. This is very good news. Now you compound this with what we're about to get into here and you would really think this stock would be up after hours, okay? In an interview with CNBC's Deidre Bosa on Monday, Dara, the CEO, said the company is targeting adjusted EBITDA profitability in 2021. He said, quote, we know there is an expectation of profitability and we expect to deliver that for 2021, Dara said. And this is like kind of shocking, okay? Because honestly, I wasn't expecting any type of EBITDA profitability, even on an adjusted basis in 2021. I was thinking as an Uber shareholder, Holder, someone that started buying the stock over the past month or so, I was thinking like 2022, maybe 2023, we can start talking about that. 2021 is earlier than expected. So you had a lot of good news here in the Uber numbers. And then if you want to, you know, look at the super in-depth numbers on the other video, it, there was so much good news packed in here. Double beat, profitability earlier than expected, a ton of very positive metrics around the stock. And yet the stock goes down 5% after hours. Okay. And it's on obviously been a rough stock since the whole IPO. And here we are, the stocks get approaching the 52-week low. Who knows, maybe it crashes through that 52-week low tomorrow. The 52-week low for Uber stock is 28.31. And the 52-week high for Uber stocks, over $47 a share. And I think that was when it first, first went IPO, like literally the first day of trading. And then it's just pretty much been down and down ever since. Now, part of me thinks here that this has nothing to do with what Uber reported in terms of its stock price movement. I don't think it mattered at all what Uber reported reported today. They could have reported a loss of $1.10. They could have reported a, a profit somehow. They could have reported like a loss of 20 cents. They could have beat revenue by 500 million. I don't think it even matters at all what Uber actually reported for numbers today. I don't think there's anybody that's even like cares about that at the moment for Uber stock. I think a lot of people are just thinking about that lockup expiration, which is on November 6th. Okay. That's a couple days from now. So we got tomorrow's trading day, which is Tuesday. And then boy, do the shares come onto the market on the following day, okay, Wednesday. Then as of that day, about 90% of Uber stock will be able to be traded on the public markets with only about 10% roughly for future lockup expirations. So I think honestly, I think a lot of the folks that are trading in after hours uh, and some of these shareholders that might be selling or trading around the stock, I think they're honestly really, really scared about this lockup expiration. They're thinking, you know, who cares what Uber reported for numbers? I just want to get out of this stock because it might get a lot worse when basically that lockup expiration comes. And you have a lot of big investors that could possibly start selling throughout November. It's not like just November 6th would be the only day, you know, some of these insiders and some of these old shareholders would sell. It could be for the full month of November, you know, just selling out, selling out, selling out. If you look at somebody like SoftBank, right? SoftBank's a huge, huge investor 
in Uber. And they're gonna have to take like a $5 billion rate down minimum for what has happened with the WeWork situation, okay? Over a $5 billion rate down SoftBank's gonna have to take, and SoftBank's a huge investor in Uber. And so SoftBank might wanna just cash out a ton of their Uber shares. And you know, some commentary recently was kinda of scary. SoftBank founder Masasan told the Nikkei business that he is embarrassed of his investment record, including investments like Uber in WeWork. And when you see things like that, it does kind of sound a little scary. It sounds like, is this guy going to dump all his shares onto the market throughout the month of November? What's going to happen here? And we don't know. And I think a lot of investors are just scared because they're thinking about the short term here. And I totally understand like a lot of investors, or I don't even, I, I can't call you an investor. If you're trading in and out of a stock based on a lockup expiration, I can't really call you an investor. I call you a trader. You're trying to trade in and out of this stock, hoping that it's going to go a bunch lower because a bunch of people are going to sell out the shares or somebody like SoftBank here, which is very much a possibility. And therefore, next thing you know, Uber is trading at 25 bucks a share, $24 a share. And I definitely can understand that philosophy because it is scary. Like hearing somebody like that say they're embarrassed, they're embarrassed of, you know, things like this. And it's like, wow, okay, are they about to dump all their shares in the market throughout the month of November? Or what's going to happen here? And something that I'll just say real quick, I just want to make this quick point. I know this isn't that much in relation to Uber, but you know, SoftBank founder Masasan, you know, I'm not, I, I don't really believe in his investment philosophy. He's claiming that, you know, he's got 30 year plans on these investments and some as much as 300 years in, in the future and whatnot. And I'm just like, Masasan, like, what are you talking about? Like, is it impossible? It is literally impossible to forecast businesses 30 years in the future. Way too much stuff changes way too fast nowadays. Like, it's hard to forecast a business more than five years in the future. Like, three to five years is about as far as I look into the future because that's about as far as you can see. Anything over five years, and when you talk about getting above 10 years, you really have no clue. There's no way to like tell what a company's gonna be doing 10 years from now. I mean, if you go back to Apple in, in, in you know 1998, who had any clue at all that they were gonna launch an iPod and then an iPhone and then come out with services and then Steve Jobs is gonna pass away and somehow the company's gonna keep going. Like you, there's no one in the world that could have predicted that. That's just you know a complete guessing game. The fact that anybody's gonna try to make a 300 year prediction, a 30 year prediction, it sounds cool, but it's a complete fairy tale in the end. And I'm amazed, I'm amazed anybody would give their money to Masasan to invest. I'm, I'm amazed. I'm amazed when somebody's talking that crazy about, oh yeah, we're making investments for 30 years in the future, 300 years in the future. I'm like, dude, it's hard to tell what's going to happen five years in the future. Never mind 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years in the future. Give me a break. It's a complete joke. Okay. Now I do believe it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Uber stock in December and January. Because I believe there are definitely some big funds out there, whether we're talking trading funds or more investment funds, that are active funds that are thinking about maybe starting an Uber position, but they know the big lockup expiration is coming and they're like, we're gonna wait on the sideline for now. And so I think it's gonna be very important to kind of see if there's more buying pressure on Uber stock come December in January, when a lot of funds start changing around their asset allocations, it's gonna be very, very interesting to see if there's a lot of buying pressure that comes into Uber stock come December, maybe late December into January and whatnot. I see that a lot of times with some of these beaten down stocks that you know have some big visions there and have some great things they're trying to accomplish where all of a sudden money starts to inflow that hadn't previously inflowed and when I look at Uber stock we're going to talk in just a moment about how much money I'm going to start putting in Uber stock which I'm not selling my Uber shares that I've already accumulated and uh, I'm going to be buying quite a few more and I'm going to show you in just a second what I'm thinking about doing but Uber stock reminds me a lot of Facebook so Facebook that's a company that went public that was back in uh, I think it was like 2012 and I remember Facebook you know I remember all these companies that have gone public in the last 10 plus years because I've been in the market. And um, so Facebook goes public. No one understood Facebook. No one understood Facebook. Company IPOs at $38 a share. A few months later, literally a few months later, like four to six months later, the stock's trading under $19 a share. No one understood Facebook. No one understood, how's Facebook gonna make money? Wait a minute, they're gonna do ads that are personalized? Like no 
one like understood any of this. And then there was like the mobile wave, like going to mobile technology and no one on Wall Street could comprehend Facebook stock. And it literally drops 50% from its IPO price. And um, I'm seeing a lot of the similar things going on here with Uber stock, where to me, it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen in the future, kind of like it was for Facebook. But a lot, I'm just noticing a lot of Wall Street is still just not quite comprehending this story and why this is so exciting and why this is like uh, you know a slam dunk just as Facebook was like they, they just can't quite wrap their heads around it quite yet um, but eventually they're gonna Uber will be one of the biggest companies in the world I am fully convinced of that one of the biggest companies in the entire world in terms of market cap and that will probably happen within the next five to ten years but you have most of Wall Street here not understanding Uber's business model because this is all stuff that's brand new like this is not like stuff that is like old school technology just as Facebook and the way Facebook wanted to run ads and their mobile experience and then they bought Instagram and like people weren't understanding that they just couldn't wrap their head around it now you tell Facebook's business model and like everybody gets it right back you know you go back literally just six or seven years ago it was like very few people understood what was going on with Facebook and why that was so valuable and I'm seeing a very similar thing happen with Uber where you know a lot of these individuals just can't wrap their head around it they they're the ride sharing business they're just not quite understanding it and why this is going to be so profitable in the future in food delivery and food grocery delivery they're just not understanding all these businesses and uber freight this is something that literally just grew like 80 plus percent year over year and now it's over you know a 200 million dollar run rate just in the last quarter uber freight is totally going under the radar this is a business that will be a multi-billion dollar business within the next two or three years multi-billion dollar business within two to three years and no one's paying attention to this and i'm just looking at uber stock and i'm just i'm just seeing the writing on the wall this is the same exact thing very very similar to what happened with facebook where people just don't get it amazon for a long time people didn't get it right amazon for a long time people did not get it amazon the, the mentality around amazon stock shifted about three or four years ago okay before that people didn't get amazon they were like wait a minute how are they going to make money wait why are they not making money wait they're selling all these products and they're barely breaking even what is wrong with this business amazon web services no one paid attention to it until very recently, like the past two or three years. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's all worked out. So I'm seeing very, very similar things happen with Uber. And um, so here's what I'm looking at, all right? So as far as Uber stock, as far as my buys up until this point, I've been doing a lot of like $2,000 to $4,000 buys. And most of my shares, if not all my shares, have been somewhere around like, I think $30 to $32 as of right now. And that's where I've started buying Uber stock, all right? Now, as of tomorrow, we should get Uber stock somewhere in the $29 to like $28 range, all right? And in this range, I'm gonna personally be interested in adding about $5,000 worth of buy orders at a time, okay? Meaning I'm gonna be buying for about 5K at a time. And I always keep, you guys always know, I always like to keep 10 to 30% of my wealth in cash and cash equivalents. It's just money sitting on the sideline, okay? And it's for special situations like we're gonna likely have with Uber here over the month of November. Because if I didn't have any cash sitting on the sideline, then this opportunity I'm gonna likely get in Uber stock over this next month, this wouldn't even be possible because I wouldn't have any money, right? So this is why I always like to keep 10 to 30%. And by the way, as of right now, I'm getting pretty dang close to that number, but that number is gonna likely go down because what's gonna happen with here with Uber, okay? So 29 to 28, I'm kind of looking at like $5,000 type I orders, okay? If we can get down to about, you know, 25 bucks a share, you know, or let's say a little lower than that, which we're going to have to see what happens with this lockup. This could be crazy. This could be a huge dump on the market and the stock drops a ton more. And all of a sudden we wake up Wednesday morning and Uber stocks down, you know, 10%, 15%, 20%, who knows? And it also could like hardly move. We, we just don't know because we, there's no one that knows how many shares are going to be dumped on the market by a lot of these insiders and these old investors. Okay. So we don't know what's going to happen there, but let's say there's a huge move down and the stock's trading at $25, 20 $24, $23 come Wednesday, Thursday, and throughout the month of November. At that point, I'm going to likely start doing $7,000 plus dollar buy orders for Uber stock, okay? And I'm interested in, in pretty much adding a position in Uber stock that is worth somewhere around 100 k to maybe 125 k That's kind of what I personally feel I'm willing to invest into Uber stock. For me personally, about 100 k to 125 k 
like make it a good size position without being something too crazy where you know if uber somehow doesn't work out and you know it all, all of a sudden they don't they don't grow anymore which wouldn't make any sense like if everything went bad and the business went bad and all of a sudden you know everything's bad and blah 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 um you know that's a, a amount of money i'm willing to risk there with this particular stock but about 100k to 125k is what i'm personally willing to risk in uber i love this company i love the way they disrupt industries and they will continue to disrupt industries they already got you know huge industries are disrupting they obviously the transportation side on just like you know people getting around the food delivery side groceries now they're starting to get more and more into trucking side of their business and they're going to continue to go after industries they're now starting to do helicopters from like you know manhattan to jfk jfk to manhattan i think helicopters is a business they're going to continue to explore and disrupt industries i think it's possibility this is further down the road that they disrupt the airline industry they want to disrupt everything and they will do this this is a company that has its in their dna and they just know how to win they know how to lose money and end up winning the market share game which by the way in today's video on financial education too we actually looked at the concrete numbers and the ride side of uber's business is profitable people see uber takes a loss and they think oh my gosh they're, they're losing money on rides no they're actually making money on rides rides is a profitable business they're losing money because of the eats business and all those other businesses that in the short term here are losing their money but over the long term these businesses have unbelievable opportunities for uber over time and so people just don't quite get it as of right now so this is about what i want to end up getting in uber versus right now we probably have um as of right now maybe like 30k maybe 40k so somewhere around there as of right now. Um, so needless to say, we have a lot. We have a lot to put into Uber over the course of the next month or two. And uh, I'm just hoping it gets as close to this number as possible, if not below this number, because that's where we could really load up and get our, you know, I would love to have cost basis somewhere around 25 bucks on Uber. If that happened, it would be a dream come true. Um, we'll have to see if it happens. It all depends on how that lockup expiration happens throughout the month of November. So anyways, let me know what you guys think about Uber stock in that comment section. Are you buying? Are you staying on the sideline? Are you interested at all in the stock? Are you short selling this stock? Do you not believe in it at all? Are you buying call options, put options? I would love to hear your opinion on Uber stock in that comment section as always. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button if you enjoy me sharing my opinion on this particular stock, all right? Thank you for watching. Have a great day.